Hello there. So, Sam Fenner. I really enjoy the animations and the world that's being built here, and I feel dedicated to give something back. You've read the title. I'm gonna try and recreate a character's eyes using resin. And with the latest voice test being out, who would have been a better choice than Winifred? The big boss lady with eyes of molten gold. I'm gonna try and keep this somewhat short, I'm not a real YouTuber anyway. Step one will be to make the pupils, and since A, I don't have the luxury of modern machinery like a 3D printer or a CNC router, and B, I'm not a lazy cunt, it's gonna be back to good old hand tools. That's right, files. To the workshop! The plan is essentially to make a silicone mold for the pupils, so the size and shape will be consistent throughout all the parts I'll be making. Because, let's face it, I am going to have to redo all of it at least once. The master part is made from a piece of brass sheet. File into shape. Sanded. And polished. You just gotta love brass. It's a little expensive, but a pleasure to work with. With the master part finished, I can mix up some silicone and pour it on top, using a cut-off cap from a spray can as an outside mold. Open top molds are perfect for projects like this, because the parts only need to be shiny on one face. I cleaned them up a little bit, and now it's time to make the first set of pupils. Finally! Resin! Yes! I didn't bother to film the mixing process of the silicone or the resin, it's quite repetitive and boring. The mold has to be tilted a few times to allow the resin to flow into all the tight corners. Once it's gotten to where it needs to go, I can fill up the rest. Two days later, and it's demolding day. God, I love demolding day. The parts came out beautifully. One face is a mirror finish, and the other one will just be sanded flat later on. Now it's time to make the molds for the actual eyes. I used a piece of clear acrylic plate as a base and hot glued some acrylic pipe cutoffs on top. I'll eventually make a proper silicone mold for the eyes too, but I think these cheap single-use molds will do for now. As soon as the hot glue has cooled down, I can set the plate on top of my leveling tray, which I had adjusted beforehand. Keeping everything perfectly level is essential for a project like this. Again, I mixed up some resin, 30 grams per mold, plus a little extra, dyed it black and started pouring the base layer for the eyes. I also went ahead and filled up the pupil molds again to make spare parts, you never know when they might come in handy. And spoilers, they did. A big challenge to wrap my head around was how to get the pupil centered on the base. I found a solution that worked by making this little jig right here. It's basically a round disc with the outline of the pupil printed in the center. I can stick the pupil to it, spread some super glue on the underside and lower it onto the base. Press it down, wait a few seconds and boom, it's stuck in place. And even roughly where it belongs. And that's it, that's all the preparation done. I'll shut up for a while and let you watch the main part in peace, without my blabbering. Oh and please keep in mind that I won't be able to recreate the design like accurately because after all, a jug of resin isn't a paintbrush, and my experiences with this stuff are still limited. Enjoy!
With the resin cured and the parts demolded, it's time to change the setting and move over to the lathe, where the eyes will get their final shape and shine. For ease of access, I took this old chunk of resin I had laying around from an older project and glued the eyes to it. That way, they're secure enough to be machined and won't be damaged by the jaws of the chuck. Centering them was a little tricky, but I managed to get them to run more or less true. At first, I trimmed off the outside until they're evenly round. Then comes the most laborious part. As I didn't just want them to be flat discs, I have to somehow get them into a more of a lens shape. To do that, I quickly made this rough radius guide from a piece of scrap metal. It'll tell me where to take off more material. There's no turning back now. Since this is a lathe for metalworking and I don't own any wood turning gouges, I'll just have to go at it with a variety of rasps and files and hope for the best. Next up is sanding. And sanding... And sanding... And even more sanding. Until eventually... Approaching the finish line now, just one little thing left, parting off. For anybody who hasn't operated a lathe before, this is a scary part. Many workpieces have exploded spectacularly at the not so gentle touch of a parting tool. If this goes wrong, the eye is going into the trash can. But luckily this is resin and resin cuts like it's nothing. Just a little more polish now, and a protective coat of car wax, and we're done! And there you have them! I mean, literally, Sam, if you want these, let me know and I'll ship them to you. I'd love to give them to you myself, it's just a 12 hour trip or so. But we're entering nut freeze season and I do not like to travel during nut freeze season. As for all the failed attempts, they go right where they belong. I hope that this video, as rudimentary as my filming and editing skills are, has been entertaining and I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Cheers! And goodbye.